Cool your engines. It's Pit Stop 2 on the Coco Show 23. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Coco Show. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And Aaron, before we start the show, we want to give a special shout out to Coco Show VIP Robert Murphy. Thank you, Robert, for supporting the show at the VIP level. Well done, sir. Now, Aaron, today we're going to be talking about Pit Stop 2. Yes. Do you have any memorable pit stops, Aaron? <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, Bo. It's funny. I know you said that in jest, but when you do my job, when you're on the road a lot, you've got pit stops set up all over the place to accommodate your every need. Uh, mm. and which means going to the bathroom on, uh, when you're in eastern Kentucky uh, and there's nothing, especially during a pandemic, you need to not only do you need to know every truck stop, every gas station that has a uh, a bathroom that you can venture into without dying, but you occasionally need to know about certain isolated fields, certain dead-end <laughs> roads. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, there are plenty of pit stops for your buddy A. Uh, you have to know about these things when you're on the road like I am. What about you? Now, did you did you ever, when you were traveling with your parents back in the day when you were a kid, yeah. did you ever do the old stop by the side of the road and then open both car doors on the Absolutely. Uh, that, that whole speed? When you do that, that's a, you're making your own stall. That's all you that's need to right. do. No one can see it. It's impervious. Even Superman could look through those doors and see what you're up to. That's when you let it go. <laughs> you know, now, have you ever had a blowout on the non <laughs> I don't. I mean, I'm talking we, about if you tires can't get here, to the pit stop, I'm bugs. talking about tires. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, have I had a blowout? Yes, I have. Uh, it was in Charleston actually. I was on my way back to Mud Mountain one time. Mm. Had a blowout coming across the bridge there over the river, and oh, wow. uh, of That's course the old man showed up, and I knew I was in trouble. In fact, we were. T I returned the favor to him a couple of weeks later, but he brought his dreaded chain. Uh, which means he's going to drag you somewhere. <laughs> so we put the donut on the car, and uh, I managed to get it off there. But when Dad, uh, so I didn't need the chain that time, but the second time when I had to go get Dad, that's when the chain came out. We had to drag mm. that car up off, off the bridge. Never fun to be in the car that's being towed by my dad. So, yeah, we've had a blowout <laughs> or two. I could have used a pit crew those days for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've only had one one time where I've where I've had to do that, and it was in D.C., not the place oh. where you want to have a blowout uh -huh. either. And uh, I, I got off the interstate at one of these exits that you don't want to get off the interstate, right? Yeah. And uh, and it was it was a place I, I won't say the name because I don't want to disparage the fine folk there. I will horrible. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I'm sitting there, and of course. I don't think I've ever really changed a tire myself before this point. And I was like 23 years old. That's, I was I was old. I was a man. That's pathetic. But okay. Yeah. But you've been lucky. And so I didn't know what to do. I didn't. Uh, I, I'm sh and so I was just like, and so I got out and I was just sort of rummaging around the back seat. This is a, I was driving a, a 2003 Volkswagen Golf, and this guy <laughs> comes walking by. Yeah. And he looks like he's an extra from some you know some hip hop video. He's wearing a Scarface shirt. He's got the ball cap on. Yeah. He's got the do rag. Yeah. And I'm like, well, let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> and he comes over and he's like, you need some help. And I was like, yeah. And then he just, he changed my tire. There for you me. go. See, you can't judge so, a book by, listen, look at that's you. Right. You got over some stuff that that's day. Right. Good for you. Bro. I did. I did. So, uh, how quick was it? Did you time him? No, he was he he was quick. He knew what he was doing. Yeah. He was not me. <laughs> He'd done it before. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but anyway, that's 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 my that's my tire blowout story. I can tell you some other blowout stories, but those are, it's it's a family show. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, Aaron, let's move on, shall we, to this week's Coco game of the week? Pit stop two. Yes, pit stop two. Now this is an interesting one, Boaster. We cover a lot of Coco games. We don't get to cover too many games that so run like a bunch of systems. And we're came out from like a huge publisher, so Pit Stop Two released for the Coco in '85. Now, bear in mind, in 1985, this was released on the Coco and the Apple II. Uh, in '84, it pretty much got released everywhere else on your C64s, your Ataris, that sort of thing. Uh, we don't know exactly who converted this to uh, the uh, Coco. Uh, I can't find anything. I noticed that Curtis on his site didn't have anyone that actually did the programming. I can tell you that Pit Stop 2 was designed by Dennis Caswell and Stephen Lundrum. These guys were both pretty big wheels. They had some uh, they had some successes. 
Uh, Dennis Caswell created Impossible Mission. He may have heard of it. Big game. Yeah. And he also, I wrote this down because I thought it was funny. Do you remember back in the day, they had a gimmick for the Atari called the Star Path Supercharger. Heck yeah. This yeah. He did three of the games on that. So that's the, Really? This Caswell's claim to fame. He, of course, did a bunch of other stuff. I believe he's now in the aviation sector. Uh, okay. His, uh, his uh, cohort here, Stephen Lundrum, he designed a couple games you may have heard of. Amongst a, a career of game development, he designed Skater Die and Summer Games. So oh my these, gosh. this game came from a couple <laughs> pedigreed guys that knew how to get it done. Yeah. I mentioned this was the release on the Apple II, the Atari 8-bit line, of course, uh, the C64. Uh, this also had a PC booter uh, release, if you remember the old booters, but where you just put the disc in. Sort of like the Amiga, you just put the disc in and mm -hmm. it boots up. They were usually crap, but this got released on there. Uh, this also got a Wii release, uh, which I think it was part of the... They they say it got released on the Wii, but I think this was part of that uh, C64 package. It got released Virtual on console yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly, Boat. Uh, Pit Stop 1, for the people that are interested, because we you know Pit Stop 1 gets no press. No one ever talks yeah. about it. I vaguely remember it. Uh, it came out in 83. It was on the uh, Atari 8-bits, the C64. I get this. I did know this. It also got a release on the ColecoVision and the Atom. So I, I don't hmm. know if there's an Atom Enhanced version. That might bear future uh, investigation, Boat. Absolutely, uh, since on, you're an Atom owner. You know, you know that, hey, hey, you're one of the few of the proud, right? Yeah. So what do you do in Pit Stop 2? Well, this game is pretty straightforward, Boat. Uh, you, are, you are a race driver, and you are driving. You get to pick from six international racetracks, Boat. Uh, and I assume these are real tracks, and uh, you may better know better than me. Uh, you've got Brands Hatch, you've got Hockenheim, uh, Ruin Les Ezarats, uh Sebring uh, Valunja, and Watkins Glen. And you get to I'm going to guess that those are real tracks because you couldn't make up names that silly. You don't think Valunja has could be a, a game that make up? <laughs> no way, no way. You also get to choose the amount of laps uh, you get to do, and you get to choose from three difficulty levels. So there's a, some options, and I will say, and we should say this right off uh, out of the gate, the Coco version of this comes up with a beautiful logo screen and a nice Absolutely. little tune. Doesn't it? And then that's yeah. a nice song. I was very impressed with that. Yeah, it looks real nice and it sounds nice. And the menu screen is one of the classier uh, option screens you're going to see on the Coco. Yeah, cuz I mean, let's be honest, most of the time it's it, it it doesn't look like a like a title like a proper title screen. You'll just have some text or something like Galax Attack or the last week's Coco Talk game of the week. It's just sort of a red text on a black background. This looks like something that would it looks like a commercial release because it was. Let's be so. even more honest. Most Coco games give you no options. So you go, <laughs> play the you play the game. That's the way they do it. So, uh once you have uh, chosen one or two players, you've chosen your track or a circuit, you could run the whole circuit, and you have chosen your difficulty, it's time to race. Uh, one of the neat things about Pit Stop 2 is that it gives you the ability to have two players simultaneous racing on the Coco. Right. This was really the selling point of this game across all the systems, because this wasn't something that was seen all that often back in the day. Maybe it wasn't seen at all. I can't think of too many games. I think a test drive, one of the test drives let you do it, but I think this predates... Most things. It does. I'm sure it predates Test Drive. I'll tell you the first time I saw Pit Stop 2, by the way, was at uh, Comp Computer World at the Charleston Town Center boat, and you were hmm. and they had it rigged up to control with a mouse. That was this is when I the very first time I ever saw a computer mouse. I believe it was on an Apple II, and this game was on the was what was playing on the machine. So that was the first time I saw a mouse. Was the first time I saw Pit Stop 2. Kind of wacky. Uh, so let's get to the actual game. You have your partner, or you don't. If you're playing single player, you don't. And you race down a track. Uh, this is a standard, what I would call the pole position style track with the red and white mm -hmm. lines on either side and the, and the mm -hmm. broken line down Mountains the Mountains in the background. And Although, really, this is more like turbo than it is pole position in a lot of ways. And you go down, and your job, job is to go around the track and avoid other drivers and go as fast as you can. Uh, you can top your car out around 250 miles an hour. Uh, the track is conveniently displayed on the right-hand side of the screen, including a layout of the track, your position on the track, the uh, computer uh, opponent's position on the track, and the lap number are all on the right-hand side. 
along the bottom of your sector of the screen is your miles per hour, the overall time, and the amount of fuel, which is important. So you'll roll around this track, and you're, depending on the number of laps you're doing, uh, you're going to want to pay attention to your fuel in particular, because a after a spell, you will run out of fuel if you do not pit. You'll know you're at the pits when you cross the end line and the track on one side of your car becomes broken line. That means mm -hmm. you can actually pull into the track, uh, pull into the pit, and then you can have the pit stop. Uh, when you right. have the pit stop, you have the option of refueling, and you also have the option of changing tires. Now, boat, tell everyone how does the pit stop go? Okay, so the pit stop is from an entirely different viewpoint. Your car pulls in. Imagine if you you can see the entire pit area and you see your pit crew. Okay, you've got two two guys, maybe they're girls. They're hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, and you're and what they do is uh, you've got one guy who's fueling you up, and you've got the other guy whose job it is is to change the tires. And you have to direct all of this movement yourself. So this is as much a part of the game as the racing is. Uh, they they made this. This is like a mini game in the race. So. Um, when you have a guy that's fueling, you've got to kind of you, you click on him. You have a cursor that looks like a steering wheel and you maneuver the cursor over top the guy you want to move. You, you click on him. So you click on the fuel guy. You move him towards the car. He starts fueling the car. However, if he fuels the car up too much, it goes back to empty. Yes, yeah, horrible. Sort of <laughs> defies the, the, the laws of, of, of physics. But that, I mean, I understand why they did it. They yes. did it to make it a game. So uh, you have to time that correctly, and at the same time, you're trying to change your tires because your tires wear down over time, yes. just like in real racing. And you can tell your tires are worn because they go from blue to red to white, yeah. I believe, is, is how that little, works. There's a little tiny square that forms on your mm -hmm. tires that will be a color. And then as the wear grows, for example, let's say it's blue, it starts off with a tiny little speck you can barely see. And then it will grow to be like a bigger square, and eventually it's a big rectangle on your tire. And then that whole color will change to the next color, which is red. The right. uh, It is a subtle but brilliant way to determine your tire wear. i got to give them yes. credit on that, Bob, because that's very smart. Because it doesn't interfere with your gameplay in terms of visually, but you also, no one can complain, wow, I didn't know my tires were worn. It shows it right there, and it's obvious as night and exactly. day. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so you uh, and to change the tire, all you have to do is take the tire off, go over to the appropriate stack. And as soon as he approaches the stack, the, the switch is, is instantaneous and automatic. And then you put the tire back on the car. When you're done, you click on your driver with the little steering wheel cursor and you're back to the race. Yeah. Well done. But I will say, you know, uh, this is a side boat. I think I've mentioned this before, but I always think about it. I used to watch the race when I was a kid and they would get these uh, F1 cars in the pits. And they'd re you have the guy, it's just like the game. The guy would come up with a big hose, he'd refuel the sucker. Mm -hmm. I remember watching a race one time where a guy ran up to the car with the big hose, and he was refueling it, and all of a sudden, the guy started doing like the crazy chicken. He was bouncing, he was dancing, and I was like, what's that guy doing? He's going crazy. And the announcers were like freaking out, and it turns out the stuff that they use in these cars burns with an invisible pl flame. And this sucker was oh my on God. fire. He was on oh no. fire. That's awful. He was going That's crazy. Awful. And they finally they put him out. As, as far as I remember, he was okay. But I'll never forget the, the weird sensation of seeing this guy go bananas as he was <laughs> filling up this car. So I guess if you overflow the gas tank, I would much rather it go back to zero than have your guy catch on fire in, like, in right. real life. So right. now... You can pick from uh, various laps, as we mentioned, three, six, and nine laps. You're going to have to, uh, depending on how many laps you go, if you go six, you can probably pit one or maybe two times, depending on the wear on your tires. If you're going nine, you're going to be in the pits a bunch, because that's a, that's a long way to go, probably at least three times, maybe four, if you, if you uh, really wear off your tires. Uh, but when you go the three laps, you can sort of forgo the pit as long as, you, in terms of gasoline, as long as you don't actually wear your tires well, out. I, I don't think the pit even appears as an option. No, it does. It does. Does it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't remember if it did or didn't. So, okay. one of the ways you wear your tires is just ram into the racers. The other way is to actually just, you know, go up against the burn and have it wear those tires down. But, I mean, it does add something to the game. And I will say, this game needed some stuff added to it because. As far as an actual racing game goes, the game looks fine. 
the feeling of speed is is okay. The the uh, the rendering of the track is okay. It's all f- perfectly uh, serviceable, but it's just uh, to me, Boat, and you may have a different opinion, but it's just so boring. The racing well, in this game is just bland to me. Let's 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 talk about this for a yes. second. Okay. The game that everybody is going to compare this to is Pole Position because Pole Position is the most famous game from this time period that has this viewpoint. Yeah, I agree. This game kills Pole Position in every aspect but one, and that aspect is the length of the track. Uh, In an arcade racing game like this, uh, if you don't have some kind of pitting strategy that you're, 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 you're keeping an eye on, these tracks are way, way, way too long to keep you interested. It doesn't matter if you're playing single player or multiplayer. Cause a lot of times if you're playing multiplayer, you're not going to be around the other person that much anyway, unless you guys are just having to be at the same skill level or whatever. And a lot of times you're just racing against other computer players. And because of the way this game is, you don't see the standings until the end of the race. Yeah. What would have gone a long way if you're going to have tracks that are this long that take you, you know, it takes you. So this is a six minute or I'm sorry, a six lap race. It takes you 11 full minutes. That's not that's not like funny, happy time minutes in the game. That's 11 real world minutes to complete. (laughs) You need to be able to see where you are in the rankings as you go. The game does a great job of giving you the radar what they needed to give you was you're in seven out of, of 11th or something like that to give you something to shoot for rather than just, you know, blandly going along, checking your tires, making sure that, you know, when it's time to pit, you pit. That is the biggest problem with this game. Other than that, it is superior. Now, and, the, and I say all that because pole positions tracks are shorter, therefore they're more exciting. Um, as, apart from that, in my opinion, this game crushes pole position in every way possible. Uh, you don't immediately explode when you hit another car, which is my least favorite thing about pole position. Uh, the same sense of speed is there. The same you know, mountainous terrain in the background is there. You don't get the billboards on the side of the track, but you don't get those on the home ports. I mean, you do on the, on the home ports, but they're crap. They're just, they look like park benches. Um, and so this game, there's no reason for me to recommend somebody play the, any home version of pole position over pit stop two. I, I compare this a lot more to turbo in terms of the way the game actually plays. To me, it feels more you're like, sitting a little bit higher, like turbo. I think you're a little yeah, bit yeah, more yeah, behind no, the it's, car. It's pole definitely position. the different. It's a different view than turbo. I mean, that's yeah. what it feels to me, or like enduro maybe. Mm-hmm. But the big difference in those games is like scenery changes there's weather elements that things that ga- that change the uh, the game to make it more interesting to keep you interested this game has none of those things now granted you're racing on real tracks and real cars and i will say i am not a fan of racing so mm-hmm. this could be one of those games that if you're a fan of racing and you're like man i'm gonna go uh uh for like an hour playing this game by the way my thumb was my fingers were hurt when i finished the uh, the three lap version of this game so i can imagine what it's like to do a nine lap but it's just to me the racing experience was just bland and if it wasn't mm-hmm. for the pole the actual pitting in the game uh it would i wouldn't think this game was that fun and what and i will now let me ca- give the caveat of this played this with the kid we played two players on the actual coke over here Two players, this is a lot more fun because at least you can actually see the other guy, and also you you're you've got someone. I mean, you mentioned that not knowing what place you're in or that stuff. That you're right. This, having a second human player makes it more fun. This game was a game that like it plays a lot better with two people than sure. it does by yourself. Uh, and so I will give it that. And I played this back today with the Brent, and we same thing. It was more fun with two people to play. Just because most games are, but also this particular game, a lot like Stunt Car Racer on the Amiga. It, when you see the computer fly by, yeah, you're like, eh. But if you see your brother fly by, you're like, ah, oh, son of a gun. <laughs> and, you're, and, right. and you're ramming each other and stuff. And you can actually purposely wear out each other's tires and stuff. Just be a real jerk. You know, that, that's so I like that aspect of it. And the fact that it gives you two players at once. Really, this game's a two-trick pony. You got the pit stops and the two players at once. You've got something there. I also will say that most games won't give you this many tracks uh, to play with. You've got a lot of tracks, but here's the caveat to that: the tracks look cool, but when it when push comes to shove, there aren't any hairpin turns in this. 
Uh, and that stuff's not represented. So what, when you're on those tracks, you're not really on them. You're going to get some curves. You're going to get some straightaways. But you're not going to get the hairpin stuff that you would expect because they just don't have track. They don't have a rendered track of that. You know what I'm saying, Boat? And so that's kind of a bummer. I mean, I could have just drawn a track randomly and said, here it is. And if you just sort of put in curves and stuff for the part where there's hairpin turns and stuff, then it's not the same. So having seven tracks seems impressive, but when you play it, it doesn't feel like they're different. Plus, they all look the same. There's no difference well, I was in the gonna backgrounds. Say, you know, one of the, one of the main reasons why you'd want to play different tracks is to see different backgrounds or different scenery and stuff like that. And in this game, you don't get any of that. Exactly, so. Boat. You're exactly right. So... This game is tough to call for me. Uh, on the one hand, as far as Coco Racing games go, this is near the top of the list. Uh, I think I think uh, that Speed Racer game we reviewed a long time ago was probably a little bit better. But I think that mm -hmm. game is uh, that game's a lot more like Turbo. Plus, they went ahead and went the extra mile and added all the different scenario, you know, different uh, backgrounds and stuff. But it doesn't have the two player simultaneous. I think for multiplayer racing on the Coco, this is your baby right here. Uh, in yeah. fact, maybe there's not any others. I don't know of any. Uh, for two players, this is the way to go. If you're going to play this by yourself, you could probably play something else and have a better time, in my opinion, mm -hmm. Boat. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, the, I, I like Speed Racer more, um, but for two players, this is this is the only game in town. So from this perspective, of now course, so. we I had a look at this in boat. You, of course, you're an Atari guy from way back uh, on on these. So I went ahead and grabbed the Atari version of this to, uh, to compare and contrast amongst the two. And I will say the Atari version offers uh, obviously it's got more colors to it, but it's mm -hmm. not what I would call a graphic tour de force on the eight bit. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, you get green grass, you get a, a, a better, uh, picture in terms of the tarmac there, but I mean, the mm -hmm. cars aren't, I don't think the cars look better. I don't think no. it looks. In fact, I think the cars look worse. Yeah. I mean, have you, have you tried this on the eight bit before? No. In fact, this is, this is a game that completely passed me by. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to try it out, but this is a game that sort of like, you know, when we were talking about the the Amstrad versus the ZX Spectrum version of Exelon that we did on the show just a couple shows ago, yeah, uh, there are more colors in this, but the, the 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 drawings don't have the fidelity that the half, you know, that 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 sort of weird uh, resolution, you know, artifacting colors on the Coco and the Apple II do. So right. this almost looks like it's like a child's drawing. Versus the, uh, the the Coco version looks like a tracing of a real automobile. Well, one thing I mean, the the Atari version has uh, has arrows to tell you what what the, what the various curves are coming up as. But if you look, the Atari version is uh, much the track is more narrow. There's not mm -hmm. a center line. Mm -hmm. uh, the cars don't look as good. Listen, it's a mixed bag. I don't think the pits look as good. This is going to sound like the stupidest thing I've ever said. I thought about this before. I was like, I'm not going to say this. I'm going to say it. When I played this back in the day, Boat, and I kid you not, this is God's honest truth, part of the draw of this game was when you pitted and when you started and finished the race was to see how awesome the cars looked. Just the yeah, graphic sure. of the car was right. I remember that's all my friends would talk about how cool these cars look. They looked like real cars. Because yeah. this is this was 84 or 85, and having graphics of that caliber were unusual okay and so just looking at the cars and looking at the pit crew they looked like an actual pit crew you felt like you were actually doing something there so just that element alone i think sold this game on all, across all the different versions uh, and it seems kind of silly to think about that now but back in those days those sorts of graphics were sort of unheard of at the time and they looked tremendous and i think that's what sold this game way more than the actual driving elements of the game did both you're absolutely right. You're uh, absolutely right. We did not get any Discord reviews on this, but I did look up some reviews on it, uh, Boatster, including from uh, one of my favorite outfits. And I recommend these guys for their. Well, we 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 did get a we did get a Discord. Oh, review. did we? Well, go ahead, lay it in me, lay it on me, man. Yeah, uh, this comes to the one and only L. Curtis Boyle. All hail. Uh, he says the Coco never got a port of the original Pit Stop, but to be honest, it wasn't missing much. Pit Stop Two, irregardless of the platform, is a much better game. Featuring 3D graphics a la pole position, it turned out to be one of the best of this style racing game on the Coco, rivaled only by Speed Racer. 
two major innovations are the split screen view for two players and the pit stop, which was also in the original pit stop. Uh, in the pits, you both refuel and swap damaged tires. Although not really needed when doing a three-lap race, they are crucial in six to nine lap races. This game really shines with two human players where you purposefully ram each other trying to inflict damage enough to force someone into the pits early. On longer races, you may gamble on not doing a full refuel to get out of the pits faster, etc. Good graphics and sound, some multi-voice music makes this a 9 out of 10 for me, and two human player mode only dropping slightly to 8 out of 10 for one player. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Curtis, very much. Uh, getting back to the IcePeople.net review, they give this a B-. And they they pretty much say the same things I did, So, but they do say that there's a caveat, and the if I may quote, he says, so what's the problem? The actual track racing turns out to be the weakest part of the game, a rather undesirable thing to have as its greatest weakness. It's competent, but never exciting. The challenge of steering and staying on the track is never all that great, and the interaction with other cars is pretty sparse and tame, except for head-to-head -head matchups in two-player games. I agree with that pretty much wholeheartedly. He also says that uh, uh, Mitch Tron Speed Racer gets the nod by a moderate mm. margin uh, for, for uh, the fun factor. So, again, if you're going to play the single version... Uh, I would go with uh, Speed Racer, but if you're going to play with your buddy or your brother or your son, uh, that I would go or your daughter, I would go after this for that. Or if you're really uh, keen on the pit stop angle, and if you you can actually get pretty good. At, I mean, listen, you're not going to be pit stopping like you see on TV. Your pit crew moves around like like they've been sucking ether all day. I mean, they're they're <laughs> slow as heck. Those tire guys, and the thing is, you can you can do two things at once. You can have the mm -hmm. gas guy go to work while you're moving a tire guy. But the problem is, like you said, it is super dangerous to let that gas go to the top. You're mm -hmm. boned if that thing goes up. It's, that's a right. sick feeling as you watch your opponent zoom around the track. But I remember having a lot of fun with this back in the day with my brother and my friends playing two players. And me and the boy had a decent time of it. Uh, so there's fun to be had, uh, but I wouldn't expect to be wowed by anything when you race on this. It's just not that kind of game, both. Well, that sounds like we're going to wrap things up on Pit Stop 2. So, uh, of course, we want to thank all of you for listening to The Coco Show. We really enjoy doing it every month. And we want to give a special shout-out to the patrons of this show. If you want to support The Coco Show, you can head on over to patreon.com slash The Coco Show. And uh, you can join the club like Robert Murphy, Edvin Helen, Steve Rasmussen, Buttons, and William Becker. Thank you guys so much for being Coco Show supporters. We really appreciate it. Now, if you want to watch the show live, uh, you can watch us live on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. We record, we usually do uh, our Sinclair, the Coco Show, 1200XL, and Ask the Amigos all back to back to back to back. Uh, so you can uh, just subscribe to our channel or follow us on Twitch, and uh, you can get uh, notified when we're recording. So we'd love to have you around hanging out with us in the chat. Now, Aaron, next month's game is going to be, this is my choice. I think. Uh, and uh, I was inspired by watching Coco Talk yesterday. Next week, next month, sorry, next month's game is going to be Mud Pies. Mud Pies. Okay, that sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we will be playing that next time. And uh, like I said, thanks for listening to the Coco Show. We will see you then. And until then, all hail. El Curtis Boyle. <laughs>